In this lecture, you're going to learn how to upload the system that we have developed online so that it can be accessible over the internet. In order to do that, you need two basic things. One, you need a domain name and two, you need an hosting account. The domain name will be what will be typed on the URL in order to access the website. Usually when you register for hosting account with GoDaddy or Bluehost or any other provider out there, they will usually give you a domain name for one year free of charge. Alright, so once you get your domain name and the hosting account, the next thing is to log into the cPanel. This information will be provided to you by the hosting company that you choose. So once you log into the cPanel, I need you to verify the version of PHP that you're using. You remember for this course, the minimal version that you can use is PHP 5.5. Right now, I'm going to scroll down to the section where I can check the version. So you come on the software, I'll go to select PHP version. Yours may be different depending on your host provider. And if you're not able to locate it, you can try to contact their customer support. So I'll select PHP version. And right here, you see that I am using version 5.5. You can actually change it to a newer version. Here, 5.6 is the highest version that is currently supported by this server. All right, so after ensuring that the version is minimum 5.5, we're now going to create a database. So come here to databases section. Most of the cPanels are pretty much the same. So the first thing we want to do is MySQL databases. Click on this link. And then we're going to create a new database. All right, I'll name this PHP login system and then click on create. So after creating the database, you need to assign a user to this database. So basically what you do is to create a new user who will be using this database. So you can create, go ahead to enter the username, the passwords, and then create user. I already have a user account here. I won't be creating another one. So after creating the user account, you need to then attach this user to that specific database. So here we're going to say, we want to add this user user underscore auth to php login system and then i'm going to say add as part of the process to add a user to a database you need to select some of the privileges that will be available to this user i'm just going to click all privileges and then make changes so you may want to consider the privileges that you're giving to the user for that specific database but right here i'm just going to give all privileges Okay, so now we have created a database, a PHP login system, and we have attached this user to the database. So what this means is that this user will be able to access this database. In order to view this database, we'll go back to home, and then let's go to PHP my admin. All right, so once you open PHP my admin, you see the database here going to click on the specific database right now we don't have any table in this database so what we want to do is to actually just import the tables that we created in localhost all right so i'll go over to the localhost php my admin and here you can see both tables we have the users table and here we have the trash table all right so i'll select both tables trash and users and then click on exports so custom and then uh, we are exporting both tables structure and data so just scroll down and click on go and then save this to a location on your system all right so i'll just save it here because i can remember this location now we come over to php my admin for the live server and click on import then browse your computer click on browse and then I'm going to select the database file. Click on go. And right now we have successfully imported both the trash and the users table. Before importing this table, I actually deleted all the data. So if you come over to the local host PHP my admin, you click on trash table, you see there's no record. Users table, there's no record because I actually cleared all the data. And right here, the tables will also be empty. Now that we have the database set up, the next thing we need to do is to create an FTP account. 
FTP stands for file transfer protocol. This is a protocol that allows us to transfer files from our local machine to the server using any of the available softwares. So we are going to create an FTP account so that we can upload the project files from our local computer to the remote server. So I'll go over again to my cPanel and then I'm going to look for FTP. Right here, you can see under files, this FTP account. I'll click on the link to go over to that section. Here you can see the form to add a new FTP account. I'm going to name this auth and then I'm going to enter my password. So the next thing is to actually specify the directory where we want to upload the files to. So by default, if you have just bought a new domain and you're uploading files to this domain for the first time, okay, you should leave it as public underscore HTML. All right, so in this case, your files will be uploaded to the home directory so that you can then navigate to, let's say, the new site that you have is ictdesignup.com. And then when you click on enter, the content that will be loaded on this page will be the index file, which is in the uh, public underscore HTML directory. So, but in our case here, I already have a site running on ictdesignup.com. So what I want to do is to create another folder where I'm going to upload the files so that when I come to the address bar, I can simply just type slash out. So when I do something like this, instead of loading the home directory, it is now going to load the index file, which is in the out folder. So when we are creating the FTP account, you can see here public HTML, then I'm going to put out. So when we do this, this folder is going to be created for us automatically and uh, it's going to be empty by default. So we can also specify the quota for this FTP account. I want to limit it to 2000 megabytes and then I will click on create FTP. All right, so I have created this FTP account. And right here, you can see this link, configure FTP client. A client is basically what you use to upload the files online. I will be using FileZilla as my client. If you don't have it installed, all you need to do is just Google FileZilla and download it. It is free. All right, so here's the FileZilla software. Before we upload our files online, we need to make some changes to some of our script, like our database connection script. We now need to update it to now refer to the database name that we created online, the database username, and also the database password. And also in the email script, we need to do some little changes. All right, so let's quickly do that before we upload the files to the server. All right, so I'm going to open the test editor now. And right here, I have the database.php file. So first thing first, I need to change the username. The username now is auth underscore user. And then the database name is php underscore login underscore system. The host will remain the same. The last thing here, I need to now enter a password. All right, so this is all we need to do for the database.php file. So the next one is the send-email.php. I'm going to just make some little changes so that this will comply with what GoDaddy requires. If the changes here does not reflect what your hosting provider requires, you can actually speak to their customer support and find out what they require. So for this, I'm going to change the SMTP secure to SSL. And then the port, I'm going to change it to 465. And then the host, I'm going to change it to localhost. So these are some of the things that GoDaddy requires. And the next thing you need to do here is to now enter your login username. So this will be your cPanel, cPanel username, and this will be your cPanel password. So for GoDaddy, you only need to use the cPanel username and the cPanel password. And also your front email should be an email that you created within your domain. For instance, I have info at ictdesignup.com. If you leave it as no reply, it may go through, but sometimes it may not go through. These are actually for security reasons because they want to be sure that you're actually sending from a domain that is valid and this is not just a spam mail. If you don't have one, it is very easy to create an email account under your domain. All you need to do is to log into your cPanel and then you can see here email account. So you just create a new email account and then you'll be able to use it in that file. All right, so the next place where we need to make some changes now will be in passsignup.php. You know, when we register a user, we send them a link to be able to confirm their email. And the URL that we have here 
is actually for localhost. So what we need to do is just change this to match the URL of our website. My website URL is ICT Design Hub, and as I mentioned just now, I'm going to be loading the files for this project in a folder called AUTH. A -U -T -H. So I can actually just grab this. So I'm going to use it here to replace this. Alright, so I have ictdesignorb.com slash alt slash activate dot php. Alright, so we're just going to grab this and then look for the other places where we actually require the user to click on a link and then update it. So I think the next place will be pass password reset dot php. Alright, so here we need to update this and then also deactivate dot php need to also change this okay so another thing i need to show you in this file is i just added a block of code here and the code that i added is the set timeout function which actually redirects the user to the logout page after their account has been deactivated so basically you know when the user deactivates the account the way it works previously you will still be able to see the link for view profile and actually the user will also be able to still perform some operations because the sessions that we created are still valid we did not destroy them after we deactivated the account so what i am doing here now is to ensure that the sessions are actually destroyed when this user deactivate their account so once we flash the message your account has been deactivated information will be kept for 14 days then we want to call the set timers function to automatically redirect to logout.php and in our logout.php file we have the sign out function here all right so i think i also want to remove this and just set it to false so here we don't want to put a message here just put false so that okay will be displayed all right, so with that, we are now ready to upload the file to the server and do some testing. All right, so I'll open the FileZilla software and here we're going to now connect. So first thing we require to connect will be the host parameter. I'll just grab the link again. All right, so host will be ictdesignorb.com, should be your domain name. And then the username will be the username for the FTP account that we created. So if you remember, I used alt at ictdesignup.com. And then I'm going to put the password. So after specifying the password, all you need to do is click on quick connect. You can see the message here that our connection was successful. And right now we are in that folder and the folder is actually empty. So what we need to do now is to locate our local site and then drag the files from our local directory to our FTP server here. And right here, I'm going to look for the folder. If you are using XAMPP, you should be going to your HTTP doc folder. So this is HTTP doc, locate the actual directory and upload the files. So I'm using WAMP, so I'm going to minimize this and then open www, alt. All right, so these are the files for the project. So I'm going to just drag the ones that I want to move over to this other side. So what you can do is to click on any of them and then select all of them. And then I'm going to remove the files that I don't want to upload. All right, so every other files I will be uploading. And also you should take note that in our project, I have actually deleted all the pictures and all the accounts. So everything actually is just deleted. This is a brand new project. Apart from the default.jpg, there's no image here. Okay, so once I've selected all the files that I want to move, you just simply drag it to this other side. And then you're going to give it some time, the files will be uploaded to the server. All right, so now the files have uploaded successfully. So we can now go to that URL and view the project online. All right, so here I've just typed ictdesignorb.com slash alt. And here we have our system online. So we're now going to try and create a new account, username, demo, password, click on sign up. All right. So everything's still working correctly. We have been able to uh, create this account. I'm not going to wait for the email so I can activate the account. All right. So I'm going to open my mail client and here I have the email. So you may need to wait for a few minutes for the email to arrive depending on your server. 
So what I'm going to do now is to click on this link, but I want to actually just copy the link because my default browser is set to Firefox and I want to open this on Chrome. Copy the link and paste here. You can see that we are actually getting the correct link icddesignhub.com slash alt slash activate.php then the ID. Enter and here we get the message your email has been confirmed you cannot log in. So we try to log in this user. Username just now was demo and then the password. Alright so we have now succeeded to log in this user into the system. You can go to their profile and then let's try to add a new profile picture. All right, profile was updated. All right, so basically this is how easy it is to upload your files online so that the rest of the world will be able to view the application that you have developed.